Jack Lipton of Columbia University, a psychologist, uh, did a poll of members of various symphony orchestras to see how they felt about one another. Interestingly, the percussionists were viewed as insensitive, unintelligent, hard of hearing, and yet fun-loving. String players were seen as arrogant, stuffy, and unauthentic. The brass players were overwhelmingly considered loud, go figure. The windward players were seen to be held in high esteem, described as quiet and meticulous, though a bit egotistical. Well, the question is, with such widely divergent personalities and perceptions, how could an orchestra ever get together to make such wonderful music? Well, the answer is simple. Regardless of how they felt towards one another, how they viewed each other, they subordinated their feelings and biases to the leadership of the conductor. Under his guidance, they played beautiful music. Jesus uses different terms when he speaks of his church. He did so to bring an understanding and a greater depth of, of recognition of what believers are that are working together for the gospel's sake in everyday life. Jesus called his church a, a, a flock, an army, a family. But one of the most often used analogies is the term of the church as a body. In Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, it captures the life of Christ. Paul urges believers to live lives in response to the Christ that is loosed in the world, that we have victory through Jesus. And one of the most powerful ways in which we're called to do that is as a body of believers. Let me read from uh, Romans chapter 12, verses 3 through 8. For by grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the measures of faith God has given you. Just as each of you has one body with many members, and each member members do not have the same function, so in Christ we who are many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given us. If a man's gift is prophecy, let him use it in proportion to his faith. If it is serving, let him serve. If it's teaching, let him teach. If it's encouraging, let him encourage. If it's contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. If it's leadership, let him govern diligently. If it's showing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. As a body of believers, we are a body that is mutually bound to one another. We have a, a common bond in the Lordship, our Savior Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 says the body is a unit through which it is made up of many parts, and though all of its parts are many, they form one body. Paul goes on to talk about how a, a foot, a hand, an ear, and an eye are all different and unique parts, but they all find commonality in Christ. Mutually connected, if we have accepted the Lordship of Christ, we are one body, many parts, but all essential to each other. Ephesians 5.23 says, Christ is the head of the church. All of its parts are connected to and work in tandem to the commands of the head. Just as grapes receive nourishment from no other source except that directed through the vine, so is Christ's body. We, Christ is the vine, and we are the branches. And we get our nourishment and our purpose and direction from him. So Christ is the vine as the branches. We can do nothing then without him. If we disconnect the nerves from the brain, the muscles cease to function and they atrophy. I know somebody who, who lost the use of an arm because of severed nerves. And though they mentioned that the nerves will slowly grow back about an inch per year, uh, usually we do not keep moving the muscles in the arms until those nerves reach back to those, those uh, muscles all the way out to the end of the fingers. But if done so, perhaps the, that arm could be reusable again. Without Christ, though, as the head, the church is nothing but a social organization. 
One of the great points made in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 13 says, we were all baptized by one spirit into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, slave or free, we were all given the one spirit to drink. The point is that we were baptized in connection with the spirit. doesn't mean that the spirit is only uh, some outward way connected to this application of water, water, but he is inwardly and effectively connected. Through baptism, he makes us one body, which means one living spiritual organism. The church is therefore an organism, not an organization. Agencies and corporations are only a body outwardly, but Christians are an inward organism through which our mutual bond is Christ. Living, breathing body of the power of God indwelt. The Holy Spirit in and through his body. The body is a living organism because Christ has given it life and direction. And as such, these body, this body has a mutual bond, but also has a mutual concern for one another and a mutual dependency upon each other. And that's my second point, mutual dependent upon one another. What we see in Romans chapter 12 and Ephesians 5, 1 Corinthians 12 are just partial lists of the gifts the corporate body needs as a whole in order to function as Christ proclaiming a vibrant church body to community. Romans 12, 6 says, different gifts according to the grace given us. 1 Corinthians 12, 4, different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit. Different kinds of service, but the same Lord. Different kinds of working, but the same God. Different, over and over again, distribution of gifts given to serve the Lord. These ministrations of service freely rendered to us by, uh, by the benefit, or I should say for the benefit of others. Many members, but each member belongs to the, all the others. Indispensable parts with special gifts that God has given us. He speaks of wisdom and knowledge, of faith, of healing, miraculous powers, prophecy and languages for the purpose of teaching, of serving, giving, and encouraging one another. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 11 states, all these are the work of one and the same spirit. And he gives them to each one just as he determines. In other words, God is, provides the necessary gifts of the spirit to the body to function properly. And I firmly believe that God has provided the right parts within this body to meet the needs of this community of Christ. And since his gifts are imparted with the power of the Holy Spirit, I'm certain that God's world-changing power is present through us as each member brings their gifts into service to the Lord. And my grandmother, I'll never forget, had low levels of a chemical called dilatin in her system, and this was years ago. Without it, her mind went into a fog. She couldn't remember a thing. My uncle had to pull the plug on the oven lest she burn things on the stove and burn the house down. She walked around totally lost. Her whole body could not function in any directed way. I had never heard of Dilatin before, but it reminded me as I heard about this story how wonderfully our bodies have been made. And it reminds me also of how essential even the littlest parts of the body, parts that I, we don't even understand, know about how they function wonderfully to make the body work. So don't think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment. In other words, avoid being prideful and superiority feelings towards others on the basis of, of your gifts or abilities because everything is measured by grace and faith. No one is given a gift to lord it over another or think better of oneself because each gift is given by God for the edification of his body. We all have different gifts, but each is esteemed and honored and cared for. Uh, none has, 
is being thought of as lesser than another or another greater than the others because each part is essential to the betterment of the whole. I remember Stan, whose hearing aid invariably always squawked during every church worship service. And he always complained about background noise interfering with the hearing of the sermon. Now, Stan was nearly deaf, so I was impressed at how far technology had advanced to allow him to hear as well as he did. And yet God created body parts can't truly be duplicated by human means. As a principle of medium of sharing Christ's presence in society, the body of Christ functions best if all of its parts are working and allowing the Holy Spirit to guide them. We all have gifts. No part can be replaced. And each of us is essential to this body. And that's uh, just another reason why this is a church that cares about you. This church body is called as an independent Christian church, meaning that it is self-governing, autonomous from outside control, save the Lordship of Jesus Christ. I, but I dislike in one sense the term independent because we are truly interdependent because we need each other. The Christian belief is that there is no private matter of solitary piety. The church body is very much interdependent upon each other. Christ's disciples are to be known for their love for one another. Jesus said they will know what you are my disciples by your love for one another. All because of our connection through Christ. Love one another as I have loved you, Jesus said. Because our love connection with Christ we have the third point, mutual concern for one another. I went to the doctor a, a number of years ago for a heart stress test after my father had heart problems. Because of family history, I started becoming concerned over a tightness in my chest. I was grateful that there was nothing wrong that they found with my heart. But when my heart started racing, my mind became concerned. My mind recognized that if my heart has a problem, then it's probably going to impact the rest of my body. Makes sense. Well, one, one year I accidentally burned my eye with some acid and my body responded by pumping adrenaline into it and I got very jittery because of all that energy and the shock to my system. My body was reacting to the one part saying, eye to brain, eye to brain. I think we have a problem here. That's true of our physical bodies react to the things that happen to the individual parts. And as a body, a body, the church reacts also to the concerns of its body parts as well. Uh, this, this week we were going to our 50th class reunion in which we will see a diverse group of people. And I know we really don't have a lot in common anymore except what we went through in classes together in schools and graduating at the same time. Well, we had a large class and most of them have all gone on their separate ways because our mutual connection didn't represent a life's change as Christ has meant to the lives of his church body. Except for a few of them, uh, we have very little mutual concern or interest in what each other is doing. There's little mutual dependency. Each can function in life and has without each, we, without each other, ever seeing each other even, for most of all that time. And we will meet together and reconnect, but likely move on and perhaps not see each other again. Church's, Christ's body, however, is united through the union that we have in Christ. He is our head and demonstrated a great concern for us. And so we reflect that great concern for one another. Jesus came to earth in bodily form. He intentionally limited himself being in one place at a time. And yet he promised that it would be to our benefit that, should, that he should leave. As John 16, 7 says, I tell you the truth, if it's for your own good, 
that I'm going away, because unless I go away, the Counselor will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When the Lord was, uh, was resurrected in the body, his spirit was free to come and inhabit all the people who place their faith in him. And through his church body then, that becomes the means through which he continues his activity on this earth today. Many of us have had our pictures taken at, say, a carnivals, in which our faces are, are placed into a, a headless frame that's painted to represent maybe a muscle man, a clown, or maybe a bathing beauty. The photos are humorous because the head doesn't fit with the body. Well, if we could picture Christ as the head of our, our local body of believers, would the world laugh at the misfit? Or would they stand in awe of the human body so closely related to the divine head? I pray that is so. A church that cares about each other is crucial that we continue to invite, to prepare, and engage every part of the body to utilize their God-given gifts and services to the glory of our Lord and edification of this community. In closing, during World War II, Winston Churchill cabled President Roosevelt saying, give us the tools and we will finish the job. Perhaps the church often feels inadequate for the demanding task of being Christ's body on earth. But the church should read scriptures as if it's being cabled from the throne of God, saying, I've given you the tools, the gifts. Now finish the job. I pray as we continue on in the service with communion that we will pray about how God has touched our lives, changed our lives, and how we commit ourselves to be of service to him through the gifts given, the Holy Spirit indwelling. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.